I won Montana by so many points. I don't have to come here. I don't have to. President Donald Trump is hosting a rally in Montana tonight. From the upcoming election to the FBI to his health, the president touched on it all. A few burn marks, but it could have been much worse. Firefighters say siding actually saved this home from a fire. So the hottest temperatures of the year so far. Unfortunately, heat continues tomorrow and red flag warnings will also go into effect. I'll have your latest forecast. Good evening. Thank you for being here with us tonight. I'm Whitney Ward. Mark and Jane are off tonight. A special type of home siding is being credited with stopping a Coeur d'Alene house fire. Investigators say a family had thrown away some used fireworks in their garbage can, only to have those fireworks then smolder and catch that entire garbage can on fire about an hour later. It could have been very bad, but Creme 2's Taylor Vito shows us what actually protected their home. It's not often that we hear a story of the material that a building's made out of stopping a fire from spreading, but in this case, that's what happened. This is some of the siding of the house, and firefighters say if it was built with something else, it could have been much worse. I mean, it was really hot by there. A neighbor across the street first noticed it late last night. Flames coming from the side of this house in northeast Coeur d'Alene. The first thing in my mind was like, wow, bonfire. And then all of a sudden it was like, that's close to the house. It was the unfortunate aftermath of fireworks. This family had set off firecrackers earlier, but then put them in the garbage can. There they smoldered, burning up both the garbage and recycling cans. And so we ran around back and knocked on the door and told them there was a fire in the house and to get out. They called 911, but lucky for this family, their house is made out of this stuff. It's a concrete based siding material. It's this fire resistant siding that fire crews say prevented the flames from spreading. Just a five by 10 foot portion of the house was damaged. It had this have been, you know, a different exterior siding, we, we might have seen a roof fire or a garage fire. No surprise, it's this kind of siding that Coeur d'Alene Fire recommends a house be made out of. In this case, it helped keep at least one fireworks call mostly at bay. You know, unfortunately, just a, a freak accident here. Coeur d'Alene Fire says this also serves as a good reminder that the next time you set off fireworks, it's a smart idea to douse used fireworks in water before tossing them. In Coeur d'Alene, Taylor Vito, Grim 2 News. Well, in Spokane, firefighters issued 22 citations for illegal fireworks last night. The fine here in Spokane can be as high as $536. The city of Spokane has banned fireworks now for nearly 30 years. And we are seeing our hottest temperatures of the year today. Meteorologist Michelle Boss in the Weather Center now. The heat looks like it's going to be sticking around at least for a little while, right, Michelle? That's right, we've got another day of hot temperatures. It looks like Spokane's gonna go on the record books. It's hitting a high of 89 today. We were just a hair shy of 90 degrees, but still the warmest we've seen since May 15th when we hit 85 degrees. Currently, Spokane at 88 degrees, but 90s all around from Colville to Deer Park, Coeur d'Alene in the lower 90s, much warmer there than even Spokane. Libby, 92, uh, down in Lewiston, 95 degrees and 90 in Moses Lake, Wenatchee, and also Omak and down into the Tri-Cities as well. Plenty of sunshine today. We have clear skies out there, no rain, hardly any clouds. And because of the hot and dry weather continuing tomorrow, and we're going to be adding some wind or higher winds with that, red flag warnings are going to go into effect tomorrow for the area shaded in pink beginning at 2 o'clock on Friday and continuing until early Saturday morning. Some overnight thunderstorms on Friday night could produce some dry lightning as well, which is uh, one of the reasons we have that red flag warning. For this evening, it's going to remain hot. Temperatures in the 80s with sunny skies, mostly clear overnight down to 64, so very mild and can Continued hot tomorrow with highs in the upper 80s, and we could see wind gusts up to 25 miles per hour. All right, Michelle, thank you. And it's great to be here tonight with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. Thank you. President Donald Trump is in Montana tonight. He is hosting a campaign rally in Great Falls in support of Congressman Greg Gianforte and congressional hopeful Matt Rosendale. Immigration continued to be a hot topic tonight. We believe in strong borders and no crime. It's very simple. Strong borders. We believe in coming into this country legally. The president spent a majority of his time urging voters not to reelect Democratic Senator John Tester. He also touted his travel ban win in the Supreme Court, creating relationships with North Korea and Russia, and said he will announce his Supreme Court pick on Monday. President Donald Trump also says he has accepted the resignation of scandal-plagued EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt. 
Pruitt was under fire recently for numerous controversies related to his spending, management and ethics. Deputy Administrator Andrew Wheeler is now going to act as administrator until a permanent replacement can be named. Washington Senator Maria Cantwell released a statement on the resignation today saying in part, environmental stewardship requires constant vigilance. The fact that Pruitt actively did the opposite, she said, makes his resignation today a great day for salmon, clean air and Mother Earth. And Senator Patty Murray sent out a tweet saying after so many ethical violations, it took far too long for Scott Pruitt to leave. She goes on to say the president now needs to look for a leader who will protect the air we breathe and the water we drink. Back here at home, about 25 people delivered children's shoes to Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers office. Today's rally was called Walk a Mile in Our Shoes and organizers are calling on the Eastern Washington representative to propose legislation now to end the Trump administration's zero tolerance immigration policy. Crime 2's Rob Harris actually joins us from that rally live now with more on her message. Rob. Yeah, the organization is, that put on this demonstration today is called Fuse Washington. And they say that they're calling on Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers and Republicans in Congress to permanently ban the separation of families at the border and also to find a solution that would reunite families that have already been separated. So today we saw people line the streets with signs and pictures of some of these children that have been migrating from Central and South America. They also brought many pairs of shoes, which they used to line the sidewalk along Post Street outside of the Congresswoman's office. The shoes were meant to represent the dangerous journey that these families are making to come to America. And they say they want representatives to, quote, put themselves in these shoes. Apparently, Republicans in Congress lack compassion, so we're asking them to put themselves in the shoes of these children who've been torn away from their families after escaping violence and threats in their native country seeking asylum here in the U.S. And so we're asking them to have compassion and take action right now to permanently ban this practice. After demonstrating outside for about 20 minutes and hearing speeches from local organizers, the group went inside the building and left shoes and pictures outside of the door of Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers' office. The Congresswoman was not present today during this demonstration and her office was empty, but I did reach out to her team and they say that the Congresswoman stands by a statement that she made earlier saying that she is looking for a permanent solution to this problem. Whitney. Rob, thank you very much. And this afternoon, two people were able to escape this boat fire on Moses Lake. Look at that. This is near Blue Heron Park. The fire department says the boaters were able to just jump off of the boat and swim to shore. But here is what is left of that boat. Fire crews were eventually able to put it out and also put an oil boom around it. The Department of Ecology is now assessing the water to see if it was contaminated.